Donald Trump love conspiracy theories, including yourself. He seems to attract lots of conspiracy theorists. Well, let me tell you, you're a conspiracy theorist, and the left and the media spreads more conspiracy theories. We like the truth. We like supporting our Constitution, our freedoms, and America first. So, what about Jewish space lasers? Tell us about Jewish space. No, why don't you, why don't you go talk about Jewish space lasers? And really, why don't you fuck off? How about that? Thanks. Thank you very much. I guess I should clear my mind here a little bit. We can all see Joe Biden's weakness. If Biden wins, can he even survive till 2029? The real question is, can we make America great again? Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. You heard him. Can Joe Biden actually live for the next four years? I guess that's the question of this political cycle and the election. I'm Alex R. Wagner, your host, and this is No News is News, where we talk about the news, and the news is not news anymore, so there is no news, so why do the news when we're doing news? The news. And this is the special uh, State of the Union, I guess, campaign speech uh, edition of No News is News. Wow, guys. This is, uh, <sighs> it's only been two days and I've already seen like the cultural phenomenon that is starting the election early. Yikes. Uh, yeah. So Joe Biden had his State of the Union address and because. Nikki Haley had dropped out of the primary the day before. That speech was no longer a traditional State of the Union speech, but a very first time ever historical bipartisan political campaign speech on the Senate floor. And yikes. Okay. We've all seen it before where they like one side stands one way, one side stands the other, or, oh, there's more of us. So like, we're all stand over here. There's always like that one guy just like standing up in the middle and you're like, excuse me, why are you friends with like all the other side? And it's like, what is going on? But we know how this thing works, but the decorum has went out the window and people are upset at things like Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, attire wearing, you know. A suit, a red suit jacket, a MAGA hat, and a t-shirt that says Lakin Riley, which kind of gets to, you know, the biggest snafu of the night. But um, before we get into that, I just got to say, like, it's getting scary out there, people. Uh, as somebody that's always been in the middle, it's interesting because I'm seeing a little bit more notoriety and popularity with this podcast as we move forward into the election and i promise to try to stay with you till then but i don't know that i will and it's not going to be my fault it's going to be basically the fact that i think that i'm going to get pulled from most of these social media avenues at some point because i'm just kind of kind of call it how it is throughout i have no dog in the race in the sense of like being conformed to one party or the other never have never will be 
And I think that that's how we should all look at elections is who's stupider. And then, you know, don't vote for that guy. But it, it seems like common sense is completely gone now because we have a bunch of like they're they're on two polar sides. And you'll see as we go through most of the clips of today. But these polar sides, um, you just cheer for them. So maybe everybody will just be upset at me and start hating me because I'll be on both sides in, in a sense. And then. Like, you'll be, y'all be screwed. And y'all be watching me by the end, like Joe Rogan style. That's the dream. So, cut to November fucking 3rd or 4th or whatever. And if this show is, like, as big as Joe Rogan, that'd be great. But I think it's either that or it's just going to disappear into the winds as people fight each other with the he said, she said, bullshit, as Limp Biscuit would say. But, yeah, it's... It's crazy. Um, one way that I put it to a friend of mine was I said, can I, can I be on the side of like, I don't want my friends who may have paperwork going on with immigration to not be deported in my neighborhood, but that I also don't want terrorists to willfully walk over the border. Can I be on that side? Can I can I get that side back, please? Or how about with abortion? Like, even on the Republicans with the fucking in vitro. But it's like, can I say, like, you know, in vitro isn't a child so that I can, like, actually have a baby? Or, you know, let's even go a little bit further. Can we, like, look at other nations like France who just, like, yeah, you know, they touted, like, a whole new bill about uh, abortion, but they had already had this in effect for since the 1970s. And it basically was just like a blanket, like 10 weeks. Can we just like call it down the even line of fucking common sense and then just be like, that's abortion done. And then we can work on like good shit. Like we can be like, no, we don't want to spend money on Ukraine because we want to spend money on the space race because we want to stop the fucking nuclear missiles in the atmosphere from Russia from pushing out our satellites and knocking out our cell phone signals. Hashtag at and So if you want your cell phone to work on a Thursday or you want Instagram to not go down, maybe uh, welcome to the 21st century and stop bickering over bullshit that we tried to solve and pretty much did solve in every other country in the 19th fucking century. On to what's going to essentially create a fucking Roman Empire fiasco. Joe Biden doing his uh, State of the Union address. The the number one thing, the big, the big, big story. I thought the big story was uh, the Speaker of the House. He's he's killing it with his like facial signals, and I think SNL should do that, but I don't think they will. Nobody's nobody would have fun anymore. But uh, his kind of facial responses to joe biden throughout the night which we'll get to some of those that's fucking hilarious every time like joe biden says something cut to this guy um but the big thing for joe biden during his state of the union address his big snafu the big story leading out of it even when the democrats don't want it to be is that he said lincoln riley and not lakin riley i'd be a winner not really i Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by illegals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you, having lost children myself. I understand. Her name is Lincoln Riley, not Lincoln Riley. She's fucking dead, bro. And this is like messed up. The y'all are bickering over some dead girl's name in the honor of like politics or whatever the hell we're doing here. All right. So it's ridiculous that people won't say your name, but it's ridiculous. that be- Oh, 
Oh, he's in trouble for something else? He should have used the word undocumented. Um, I don't believe that the president's heart uh, is with the word illegal. I think, uh, frankly, I think he shouldn't have responded to a very disrespectful Republican member who was shouting at him, the president of the United States. That is not appropriate. So Republicans are upset that he said Lincoln Riley instead of Lake and Riley. But Democrats are also upset at him because he said the word illegal. I didn't even know that this was going to be a thing. I didn't know you weren't allowed to say illegal anymore. <laughs> Can he claim ignorance just as old man? He's like, I didn't know we're fucking old man. I'm cha you changing your communist language every fucking week, guys. I don't know. Next up, we have uh, Joe Biden talking about the economy during the State of the Union address. And he <laughs> he asks what percent taxes billionaires pay and his own party representatives scream back at him zero. And it's the biggest laugh of the night because both sides laugh. Gets a both sides laugh on this one. One thousand billionaires in America. You know what the average federal tax is for those billionaires? No. They're making great sacrifices, 8.2 percent. That's far less than the vast majority of Americans pay. People think it's zero, but it's actually like, what, six or eight or some bullshit like that. And they go, that's not enough. If it was 20 percent like the rest of you, then be, 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 be. How about don't take 20 percent from the rest of us? How about stop taking our money? How about just like print more of it like you did during fucking COVID? I don't know. Like you guys couldn't even pass a bill for Ukraine, but then magically like $50 billion in like stolen Russian fake U.S. money appears for them to be able to fund their fucking war anyway. Like it's just fucking do it. Stop making us do it. Stop making us pay. Just do it. Like, I don't understand. Like, if I was, like, in the building with, like, the 15 elite people, I think they're just stupid. I think they don't understand they're actually in control of things. And they just keep cycling the same problems over and over and over again. But it's just like, do you, do you need us on the bottom to be in conflict for you to be okay at the top? I don't know. But that's what it started to seem like. Okay. And now for what I was talking about earlier. The Speaker of the House, this Mike guy, Mike whatever, his name's Mike now, that's it, that's all I really know, I hope his name is at least Mike. This guy is, uh, he's killing it with his facial responses the entire night, and it all comes to a culmination when Joe Biden talks about January 6th. America stood strong and democracy prevailed. We must be honest. The threat to democracy must be defended. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. I will not do that. This is the moment to speak the truth and to bury the lies. The power on that eye roll. Like, I just imagine being in the room, having to have a camera on you, having to be in the background of this. Like, they could put this on a one four. They could, you know, they could put them out of focus. They could make it just the president. They don't need to have these two guys like in the background, like doing their weird shit. Do they? <laughs> Is that part of it? Later on, uh, after Joe Biden said that Donald Trump insurrected the government or he who shall not be named throughout the night insurrected the government. He then went about attacking the Supreme Court by saying that they all hate women. Look, it's a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following. And with all due respect, justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you were right about that. That was supposed to be a big, powerful statement. And, like, the New York Times actually quoted him on that rather than playing his clip. Because when you play the clip, he messes it up. And if he's messing things up, when the whole point is, is he going to die or not, he clearly is going to die. Because people that fumble their words or say and, um, or things like that obviously fall over from heart attacks. They don't live. Duh. Right? <laughs> 
I think Joe Biden's always been bad at public speaking, to be honest. And I think if he's getting older, he's going to get even worse at that. So it looks worse. But the mind is still there. It's still Joe Biden's mind just doing the er, um, uh, er, um. But uh, I don't think he was ever good at it. I think we need to, need to stop. Next up, we have a new spin of a story. Uh, Joe Biden talking about a two-state solution at the State of the Union. Woo, two-state solution. Woo, yay, awesome. Uh, to Israel, I say this. Humanitarian assistance cannot be a secondary consideration or a bargaining chip. Protecting and saving innocent lives has to be a priority. As we look to the future, the only real solution to the situation is a two-state solution over time. <laughs> two-state solution. Except uh, then, later, as he was leaving, he decided to start gossiping about Netanyahu on a hot mic at the State of the Union. Great speech. <laughs> I was telling your secretary, you know, I was in Jordan and uh, Israel this weekend. And just, you know, Gotta keep pushing what you're doing on the humanitarian stuff and all this stuff. So I told him, baby, show me this. I said, baby, you know, I'm trying to come to Sir, just. just. <laughs> you see the White House aide who was like, oh, dude, sir, like, this is where you. you it's fake conversations only. Fake conversations only, sir. There are cameras everywhere. And then later on, reporters ask him about what he said. And he's like, well, why were you guys listening? I was only on national television on C-SPAN when on a hot mic. What, what, why, does you, this, you, why does Mr. Netanyahu need a come to Jesus meeting? What are you hoping to achieve? I didn't say that in the speech. After well, the what speech. about after the speech? You guys eavesdropping on things. The fact that Joe Biden thinks that people shouldn't listen in on conversations that aren't part of the speech makes me think that he thinks that he should be able to have separate private conversations from the American public as the duly elected civil servant of the nation, which seems sort of weird. It's like very anti Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Why are you telling secrets, huh, bro? What secrets you got? Why are you telling secrets? We ain't got no secrets here. But at the end of the night, at the end of the State of the Union, what does everyone think about all of this mess on the Democratic side? Is Joe Biden a functioning, ready candidate for office? Let's take it to Morning Joe. For people that have known Joe Biden, I've known him a long time. The Brzezinski's have known him for like 50 years. This is like this is the best Joe Biden. Yeah. Spicy Joe. Like this Spicy is Spicy Joe. Well, yeah, but but also this is Joe Biden who has gotten in trouble. Right. For talking too much, for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, for telling one too many jokes, <laughs> for getting angry one too many times, but for exaggerating like this this is a Joe Biden that and and uh, as an old man myself that after a while you get the rough edges do get rounded off by age so we don't have to talk about grandparents and parents we can just talk about Joe Biden past Joe Biden now and I can tell you I've talked to Joe Biden in private for decades this is the best Joe Biden yeah morning Joe lets it slip that he's known Joe Biden for. Uh, decades so why would we think he's a credible source on joe biden <laughs> hey uh did did this person do good at their speech let's ask their best friend of 35 years <laughs> no you ask the bully that hates him you ask trump or in this case if you want to ask about the cognitive ability of the president you ask the president you are on fire. You are on fire. Today. Nobody's even talking about cognitive impairment now. Yeah. <laughs> you are on fire. Today. I kind of wish sometimes there was cognitive impairment. <laughs> uh, Joe Biden wishes that he had cognitive inability or that he was mentally retarded or whatever, but he's not. <laughs> he wishes he was, though. So after the State of the Union, Joe Biden hopped on that plane and went to Pennsylvania for his first campaign stop, 
where he did not speak English. He spoke the new dialect of Pennsylvanian, also known as Betterman. Hello, from Pennsylvania, I have a message for you. Send me to Congress that I can support this right, and I promise you, we take back Congress, we, we will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. Honestly, like, that's the whole thing, is like, it, it, people in Pennsylvania already voted for a guy who's worse than that. So I think they're ready to vote for Joe Biden. I think there's something wrong with Pennsylvania. I'm always sunny in Philadelphia. They all got clubbed over the head a little bit too much. They all speak like that. Joe Biden's from Pennsylvania, isn't he? Yes, Grant, Pennsylvania. Everything, everything brain damage related seems to come from Pennsylvania. <laughs> ben Roethlisberger, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. But after Joe Biden got done speaking pure Fetterman, he let his leading lady take the way and tell us all about how Trump is bad for veterans. And here's the one thing that really gets my filly up. As the daughter of a World War II veteran, Navy veteran, and the mother of an Army soldier, Donald Trump insults our veterans and disparages those who died in war. Okay, here's the thing about uh, Trump being bad for veterans. There was one part of the speech that everyone seemed to skip, but it was when a four-star Golden star, superstar, stars of stars, generals, dad, uh, started screaming at Joe Biden. Americans deserve the freedom to be safe. And America is safer today than when I took office. Year before I took office, murder rates went up 30 percent. 30 percent they went up. The biggest increase in history. It was then. Through, no, through my American Rescue Plan, which every American voted against, I'm mad at. So that guy actually got arrested for, like, disturbing in protest or something like that. But he was there as part of a group of parents that are upset about the 13 dead soldiers from the withdrawal of Afghanistan that still have not been recognized by the president of the United States. So you have Jill... Biden over here saying that Trump hates veterans and that she's a mom of a veteran. And then there's a guy the day before being drug out of the Capitol building in handcuffs because his son died and you won't acknowledge it as the president because it makes you look bad. That makes you look really bad. <sighs> the people that look bad don't look as good as this lady, but this lady is looking a little too good. She's in a kitchen. She's in Alabama. She's speaking her heart out. This is the response to Joe Biden's state of the union by the Republicans. And this lady, they're saying she might be vice president, but like, that's a little scary. She, she speaks a new dialect of English as well. It's called Karen. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border to see it. President Biden inherited the most secure border of all time. But minutes after taking office, he suspended all deportations, he halted construction of the border wall, and he announced a plan to give amnesty to millions. We know that President Biden didn't just create this border crisis, he invited it with 94 executive actions in his first 100 days. I have never seen a scarier Christian lady from Alabama in my life. Um, it's sort of terrifying the way that she speaks. 
And I hope that she does not become the vice presidential candidate. <laughs> Cause I think she might Sarah Pale in it. Not in a stupid way, but like there's just there's something off about that lady. She's she's a little too upset <laughs> about things that don't matter. This man went up there, spoke a bunch of bumble and dumble and nonsense, and then you respond from your kitchen table and you're like, Joe Biden murdered people and there's empty chairs in the kitchen of my table now my brother died because joe biden but now that the state of the union is over as well as the rebuttal and all of that uh we're gearing up for the election got all this going on are they going to debate that is the question and on sunday Kamala Harris got to answer that question front and center after Joe Biden wouldn't answer it as well. President today would not commit to one. It depends on his behavior. We pressed the vice president. I haven't talked to the president yet about that, but I'll tell you something. On the one hand, you've got Joe Biden, someone who is competent, who is principled. And on the other side of that split screen, you've got the former president who glorifies dictators and has said he'll be a dictator on day one. Will you commit to do a debate? Peter, we just got through with the State of the Union, and I am just so excited about what we accomplished last night and our president. The fact that they have to look at their numbers and they have to analyze whether they're able to go in public and talk to another person or not, whether it strategically will work for them or not, is sort of ridiculous. It's like this whole thing is they're like, these people are on their computers and they think we're lizard people and that we're actually elitists and that we're doing all these weird, crazy things. And then he gets elected and they create a fake White House and they create a fake press briefing. And now he won't do a debate as the first person to not do a debate since Richard Nixon. I mean, even before that, they still did debates. Lincoln did debates. They, you still debate the opponent that's the whole point i mean will it serve any purpose probably not especially at this point it'll just be a mumbling bumbling hour and a half of nonsense of them screaming how the other person's wrong because that's what everybody's doing right now but they still should do it and if you don't do it you do look bad and to anybody that would make them like i don't what kind of per like Who's that devolved into a cult that they're like, actually, he shouldn't speak to that other person. It will make us look better. It's like, mm, la, 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 la. Biden, remember, at the top of that ad for Trump, the top of the hour, beginning of the show, we saw that Kamal Harris was cackling and laughing as she was now the president of the United States because Joe Biden will die at some point, apparently. So, Kamal Harris can clearly speak good or correct or whatever, right? Let's see if she can. Probably not. Given the Republicans aren't going to fix those problems with Democrats, why not do it by executive order? The American people deserve leadership that's about fixing problems. And that's why he's going to lose in November. Nope. She just said that her candidate would lose on national television on Sunday morning. Awesome. So no one knows how to speak anymore. I think the vaccines got to everybody. I think it broke everybody's brain. And if you didn't get vaccinated, then your stimulus check broke your brain. Something broke your brain. But maybe it's just like COVID. Maybe COVID just broke all of our brains. That's probably what it is. But we're all a little, a little slow in the head now. And even Kamala Harris, who is not old, who apparently is going to be the next president, is still not going to, you know, do it right or whatever. Do it right or whatever. Almost done with the show. And uh, next up, we got, like, the most hypocritical weirdo of all time. Okay, so the Oscars are tomorrow. So by the time that we get to this clip and you actually see it through the shorts or whatever, the Oscars will have happened and he probably would have won an Oscar or two. But Mr. Robert De Niro went on uh, Bill Maher to attack Joe Biden or Donald Trump and say that Donald Trump is not a human and that he 
couldn't even act as Donald Trump because there's nothing good about him and he's just pure evil and stuff. The guy is a total monster. And uh, anybody, I don't understand it. The, I guess they get behind that kind of logic. They want to fuck with people, screw them, because they're unhappy about something. He's such a mean, nasty, hateful person. I, I, I never pay, play him as an actor because he's, I can't see any good in him. Nothing. Here's the kicker when it comes to Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is 80 or nearly 80 years old. And he just had a child. Iconic actor, Robert De Niro, was uh, recently on the cover of People magazine. Fame, family, and, and the, the joy, joy of fatherhood. fatherhood. He's 112 years old. How old is he? Just Does it say there? A kid. He won't be a part of her life. She's not going to nope. remember him. No. Who's this in the photos? Oh, that's your dad. You're seven now, but back then, it's a form of abandonment. There's, no, a child it, yeah. at 80 is a form of abandonment. It's completely yeah. immoral. It's not cool to hey, hey hey i've got a yeah, baby that's onesie. what you do for your grandkid it's weird crazy creepy dude who's having children at 80 is over here lecturing people about how donald trump is pure evil and if you don't think that robert de niro is a little bit pure evil um not only is he having children at that age but he's also putting it on the front cover of People magazine as a ploy to promote himself to win an Oscar for a movie that him and his white counterpart, Martin Scorsese, made about discovering what Tulsa, Oklahoma was. Literally, watch this movie. If you read the book, what the hell's the movie called? I can't even remember what the freaking movie's called, these Oscars, these... So Killers of the Flower Moon, the book, is amazing. It uh, follows mostly uh, Jesse Palmer's character throughout the duration of the story. But instead, Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro took a different approach. And uh, they focused on a mentally challenged man that was coerced into murder and then playing scenes of silent film propaganda on Tulsa, Oklahoma in their three-hour epic about nonsense so we went from good fellas and freaking like casino to this bs so keep it in your decade robert de niro you're done and when i mean keep it in your decade i mean like stop having children at 80 years old and then putting them on the front cover of a magazine in order to win an oscar at 80 it's pretty creepy it's actually a lot more evil than anything that anyone political is doing right now all right, so now that we did the State of the Union, we went through all that nonsense. We lashed out at Robert De Niro being a creepy, woke weirdo at 80, uh, having kids. That's gross. Uh, now we get to see just publicly, like, what does the public think? Like, we looked at MSNBC. We saw that they're, you know, trying to convince us that it was a good speech. What does the public think of the election right now? <laughs> Oh, come on, we're in a house of God. <laughs> First, um, simmer down. I want to thank Commissioner Kavanaugh and Chief Hodgins for that recognition. I think that from now on, she's not going to do any more public service honorary awards. She thought that it would be another glorified moment for her where she gets a bunch of cheers, but... The NYU students don't go to the fire department. Usually people that work and have been gaslit on inflation for the last year by you and your people work at the fire department. And they don't like you. They like Trump, apparently. <laughs> I mean, Trump is New York. That's a, that's a lot of it's a lot of Long Island voters. Come on, guys. Push the Manhattan Knights out. Push the corruption out. Let's turn New York red this election cycle. That would be hilarious if the NYPD and the fire department do that. We haven't heard from him. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Donald Trump. And he's got a message for Joe Biden. And the message is, yeah, you know, good old catchphrase. Go for it. There was no inflation. 
We had the greatest economy in the history of the world. It's time to tell Crooked Joe Biden, you're fired. And just like that, you're fired. And we're going to all fire a bunch of fired people and hopefully uh, not turn into a dictatorship and not turn into a corporate overlordership. Like, you know, I don't want Jeep Cherokee, like, running my life. I don't need Coca-Cola telling me where I can and can't go. Okay, so I don't really like that angle. But I also don't like the angle of, like, Christian overlords, like, no abortions, like, drugs are all illegal, we're all going to be productive every day. Goodbye. We need, like, a in-between. Y'all love Ronald Reagan, or you did, Republicans. I'm just saying, there's a lot of cocaine and a lot of AIDS going around during Ronald Reagan. So you need a little bit of, you know, mystery and stuff. You need a little bit of, can't be, can't be handmaids tailing it up. So chill out with the deportation and y'all chill out with your fucking letting everybody over the border. Hey, that's no news is news. I'm Alex R. Wagner. Another episode in the can. Um, I guess I'll be back probably early next week or something. We'll do another one. But uh, this is a special one because of the State of the Union and uh, the states of the unions. The union is a state of itself. And here we are. And now that's the state. But uh, yeah, Oscars. There's going to be a lot of that. Maybe we'll do an Oscar. Oh, yes. We're do- We're probably going to do a freaking ridiculous Oscar episode if there's some dumb shit going on there. Like 80-year-old men making movies about Tulsa, Oklahoma while they're having children and putting them on the fucking People magazine. Goodbye. Isaac is just a father fucking sky, you know? Oh!